Now, here is a flashback from this program back in 2021. Watch. The path that the Biden administration has chosen with respect to Iran means that there's going to be chaos and war in other places in the Middle East. If you give um, Iran more money to fund terrorism like they've done in the past with the hundred billion dollars that the Obama Biden administration gave them in the first failed JCPOA agreement. Um, they're only going to do that again. I think it's really troubling, Maria, that the approach that the Biden administration has taken is to is to take our sovereign ally in the Middle East, Israel, and bring them down <clears throat> to the same level where they've raised Hamas, a terrorist organization, and said yeah. both parties are at fault. I think that's really a, a yeah. tragic and troubling uh, foreign policy approach. And we welcome back to the program the former director of national intelligence, John Radcliffe. John, you could not have been more spot on in that interview back in May of 2021. Your reaction to what has played out? Well, Maria, um, it's not that I was uh, good at uh, predicting the future. It was that I was uh, good at reading our intelligence reports. Look, throughout 2020, um, the Iranian uh, the, the Iranian military leaders and political leaders were telling us, as we listened in on their conversations, we're broke. We can't afford to fund Hamas. We can't afford uh, to fund Hezbollah. We can't afford to pay our proxies to engage in this mayhem. Um, essentially saying, you know, the maximum pressure campaign of the Trump administration was working and Iran uh, was... Uh, you know, less dangerous than they had been at any point in time. And I think what's unfortunate, Maria, is all of that intelligence, which spoke so clearly, um, was shared with the Biden administration. Uh, as they came in, they were very much aware of that. And unfortunately, it's this disturbing trend that we saw over and over again where they simply just ignored the intelligence. They ignored it in Afghanistan, and it led to disaster there. They ignored the intelligence at our southern border. It led to disaster there. And they ignored the intelligence in the Middle East. And, and now we're on, you know, uh, it's not being hyperbolic to say we're on the verge of a, of, of a war in the Middle East. Um, and, you know, to underscore just how what a colossal failure uh, the Biden administration policy on Iran is, is literally two weeks before this, this atrocity against both Israelis and Americans took place, you had President Biden's national security advisor, uh, Jake Sullivan, bragging about how great things were in the Middle East, saying it had never been quieter and he wasn't having to spend any time uh, in the Middle East. And so, you know, it really underscores, you know, uh, the, the failure of the Biden policy in Iran. And it's actually worse than what they did in Afghanistan, look, 13 Americans died uh, needlessly because they didn't follow what our intelligence told us about a conditions-based withdrawal in Afghanistan. 30 Americans were butchered uh, by, by Hamas in these attacks uh, two weeks ago. Um, and, and I just, you know, again, it's just unfortunate that, and a disturbing trend from this administration uh, not to listen to the intelligence that was so clear. And you gave them that intelligence on the way out, didn't you? I mean, you, you explained all of this to your successor. Very clearly. I mean, you know, the, the intelligence on this uh, was unequivocal. And, and that was that uh, uh, Iran was essentially broke. Uh, they were saying that themselves in the communications uh, that we were able to listen to. And, and the Biden administration was very aware of that. And yet they reversed course. And, it, and you know, and you, you, you wonder why, Maria? Well, what, what Senator Cruz just told you is now the inescapable truth. It turns out that um, Iran was negotiating with Iran, that in talking with the Biden administration, it was pro-Iranian, anti-Israeli um, negotiators on everything from uh, nuclear negotiations to hostage negotiations. And, you know, as we all sat there and wondered why such a bad deal, why would the Biden administration enter into such bad, uh, a bad deal with Iran time and time again? We now know that there was a, a, a successful Iranian influence campaign and that, you know, as, as the senator talked about, not one, not two, not three, but four different, at least, Iranian operatives essentially working within the Biden administration 
even on things like our special operations against Iran, uh, at right. the same time that they're communicating with the Iranian foreign minister. It's just, it, it, it's really appalling. And it's one of the reasons, Maria, yeah. that, that uh, Secretary Pompeo and, and others uh, and myself, uh, you know, have urged in a letter to this administration to put our national security in front of their political interests to address that right. problem. Well, we've been trying to get this administration to put national security as the priority since he walked into the Oval Office. But to no avail, look at the wide open border. We've got terrorists coming in. But, John, I want to get your take on the ammunition here. And who has the capacity to uh, empower Hamas with these weapons? You know this. You've seen the data. You've seen the classified information in terms of who specifically has these weapons? We're talking about a new axis of evil, aren't we? We're talking about Iran, Russia, China, North Korea. And I also wanted to get your take uh, in terms of the, the people working within the administration right now. Uh, you said Iran negotiating with Iran. A absolutely. And, and that's what's troubling is that, you know, some of those folks with top secret uh, clearances are aware of, you know, they should not have access to the decisions that we're making against Iran right now uh, when they're sympathizing with Iran. Uh, but to the issue of weapons, I mean, part of what makes this, uh, you know, we're in uncharted waters, uh, Maria, and, and Israel is facing something that um, no one really can tell you how this is going to play out because you know, we're all aware of the fact that Israel is going to go in with some sort of ground invasion into Gaza. But the greater threat is to the north with Hezbollah. Um, in, you know, instead of homemade rockets, which is what Hamas has, you know, Hezbollah has a, a, a fighting force of 100,000. They have somewhere between 75,000 and 130,000 precision guided missiles. And here's why that's important, Maria. Unlike yeah. the Hamas rocket that just went astray and took out a hospital, a precision guided uh, missile or drone can hit a target within, from hundreds of miles away within five to 10 meters. And that is what it, uh, Hezbollah has the capacity to rain on uh, Israel's Iron Dome, and we just don't know whether that defense system will hold up against that. Yeah. That's before we even get into the potential of ballistic missiles from, from Iran. Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to be talking about the Abraham Accords coming up in the program. This was peace, and we were hoping for peace throughout the Middle East uh, with the Abraham Accords, which was engineered we by the Trump peace. administration. We, sh we should point out that while all of this was going on, what was happening in China, the Communist Party of China was meeting with Vladimir Putin. This is, without a doubt, uh, helped China militarily, economically, yeah. diplomatically. Uh, absolutely. Uh, John, the, thank the you. The Chinese are very happy about the developments in the Middle East. You bet, Maria. Thank John, you. John Radcliffe, good to see you, sir. Thank you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.